I mean, I think until your father went to Vermont, I don't think anybody had ever heard of a Wednesday service. Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> what? You two days all the week? Wednesday. I'm going to take an offering then. You guys going to have Bible study? What? A Bible st <laughs> What? <laughs> now, down here, you know, it's all, everybody's up there all the time. Okay, you know, waving their hands and doing all this stuff and things like that. I mean, and it's sad because, I mean, I was down, Scott was with me, and so was Gail. We were down ministering with the cross, remember, down in New Orleans? Remember the parking lot that one night before we went out? You, me, and Francisco. And you remember the Spirit of the Lord and the anointing of the Lord? And then we go from that. I mean, literally, there's like three of us on a parking lot. How much more spiritual can you get than that? I mean, that's like one of the, it's obviously a holy place, right? Maybe potholes, but I mean, that would be up north, not in Louisiana. Now it's just flooded down there or whatever. But the, um, you know, the fact of the matter is here we are on a, um, on a parking lot. On a parking lot, and the Spirit of God is so strong. I can, I'm holding a huge cross, and it was like a cane. I mean, it was so strong to me, I could barely keep my body upright. It was so powerful. My wife and I, when she, before she came over here, she and I had experiences um, in the Lord on the telephone between South Africa and the United States of America, where we entered in, and this is hard to believe, and maybe you guys would like it to happen more often. <laughs> where it got, I couldn't even speak. <laughs> no laughing. <laughs> no snickering, come on. Uh, but I mean, literally, we were in the presence of the Lord, and the Lord was doing this because the Lord was doing an extraordinary work, and for a woman to come 8,000 miles to marry a guy like me and join a ministry like this, he had to do some heavy moving to make something like that happen, because... What can you say? I mean, nobody in their right mind would do that except for... But anyone in the mind of Christ would be blessed. And that was the thing. It was funny. If you talk to my wife, she had a lot of different battles with that. But what her whole thing all the time was, because she had prayed for this, was she just believed that, look, this God had shown her that this was what he wanted. And so she said, this is his best. If I do anything other than this, I'll be settling for second best. And so she fought through it. Are you glad you did, love? I mean, we have been unbelievably blessed. I mean, if we read through Hebrews 11, it talked about women receiving their dead back to life again. Didn't Jesus touch the beer? Remember that woman who was a widow who had a son who they were carrying the funeral beer? He touches the beer and the young man stands up. Okay, we got a little boy over there who was dead and lifeless in this house just a couple of days ago. Pretty ugly scene. He's, he was here that very night. Right. Back running around, and he's like, praise God. I mean, I was like, wow, cool. That's cool, my, my boy. But, you know, the, the battle, though, is in our mind. And when we compare what Jesus had to go through with relative to what we have to go through, I mean, come on, folks. I mean, it doesn't even compare. And we look, when we look at different things, we look at the sin that we lay aside every burden, the sin that so doth easily beset us or whatever. I mean, come on. I mean, do we get on one another's nerves at times? Yes, never. Yeah, but you didn't nail me to a cross. I mean, let's get real about it. I mean, oh my goodness. I mean, it, nothing, it, it's like a hangnail. And even if you did, you probably deserved it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like we get hangnail, we get all hung up about it, we're in a tizzy and stuff like that. I mean, let's not let Satan lose, cause us to lose our that's focus right. like that. Amen. Let's not th let this flush. That want this flesh, you know what? This flesh is not going to pay the price. Ricky Baldwin has a saying about this flesh. It's a good one. And I'll probably get it wrong, but it'd be an Atherton speak instead of Ricky Baldwin speak. Maybe more understandable to some, some folks in South Carolina. I don't know. But Ricky Baldwin has said that, look, this flesh can say and do whatever in the hell it wants. It's just going back to the dust. It's not going to heaven, and it's not going to hell. Okay? It's not going to heaven, it's not going to hell. Why would we pay it any heat? Look, the guy who has no responsibility? Right. Is that the guy you go seek counsel from? Yeah. <laughs> the one who doesn't have any responsibility, never had any responsibility, nobody's ever given them a single bit of responsibility. Hey, you know what, I'm looking for some counsel. Get over here. I mean, isn't that what it's like? I mean, what the hell? I mean, 
The fly <laughs> head down the street. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the guys. And the his guy, mama's house. I ain't look. When I was a <laughs> lawyer, I used to do yeah. that stuff. I mean, I'm an idiot. I used to go hang out with Shaka. Shaka, black uh, Jamaican guy who was uh, used to hang out in Central Park. He'd tell me about how he killed people and stuff like that. But it was just business. I mean. He and I used to hang out and talk for hours at night. Smoke dope. I mean, I, I mean, it's sad. I mean, but it's true. I mean, that's right. Was that? I mean, yeah. Shaka had lots of responsibility. And I also corresponded with somebody. Then went to Rikers Island. He was in jail for a while, and we I even got a picture somewhere of me and Shaka from at Rikers Island. Um, I mean, I, I, it's true. It's actually these are. I mean, I, you don't want to go into the dirty, all the gory details, but I mean, the fact of the matter is, I mean, what kind of an idiot? Don't. What kind of an idiot goes to the guy who's not going to be responsible for anything he does and seek that guy's counsel? But that's what you do when you agree with your flesh. Amen. That's what you're doing. It's true. Guy who doesn't have anything to pay for it, you're going to go listen to him. Yeah, that's going to be real pleasing to you one day. <clears throat> so the thing is, is that let us not grow weary in... In, in our minds, and there's another thing, let us not grow weary in well-doing and the like. One of the reasons why we need fellowship, folks, is because it is indeed a battle. That's right. Okay, and we do falter in this battle. And you know what, we falter in this battle, like you do something idiotic and stupid and selfish. I don't think anybody here knows anything about that, but um, and maybe some people who are listening out there, I don't know. But uh, when you do that, when you do something idiotic, selfish, and stupid, do you usually want to show up and hang out around the people who you did it in front of? <laughs> not, not typically. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, you try to avoid them like the plague, right? And you don't want to have any, man, they're going to see me and they're going to feel stupid. And, you know what? But the beautiful thing about church, when it's actually church as opposed to just a playground for self-righteous hypocrites, um, is the fact of the matter is you come in here, I look at you and I'm like, I see myself. Oh yeah, been there, done that one. What am I, how am I supposed to be all angry and furious and everything at you when I do the exact same thing and I've done it so many times. And I'm not talking about before I came to know the Lord. I'm talking about after I came to know the Lord. I mean, that's not a very good testimony of me, but it just happens to be true. It's like, it's like dirty clothes in the washing machine. That's right, it's dirty clothes in the washing machine. <laughs> the jeans don't get upset when the dirty t-shirt gets thrown in. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's a good one. But the jeans don't get upset when you throw the dirty wa the dirty T-shirt in the washing machine, okay? Because it's the place you come to get clean, all right? And so the thing is, is that's why fellowship is so important, and that's why well, the, you guys aren't going to be meeting every night after this. You're going to be meeting according to your normal schedule or whatever schedule Rick happens to work out, um, as far as your church meetings and the like. But look, you guys have calls. I mean, I wish you'd called us today earlier. I'm glad to see you here. I'm glad to see you here. But I mean, look, I mean, are, are friends inconvenient? No. no. Sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Friends can be very inconvenient. <laughs> I mean, when a friend's in need, what do you do? <laughs> oh, gosh, I'm in need. My, my leg's been cut off. Um, should I call them? I'm real busy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, look, when you're in problems, you call. Put a band You say, hey, help me. Pray for me. Can you come drive me down to the hospital? Whatever, you know, I mean, you, you, you call for help. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, and, and if you love somebody, whatever you were doing, it might have seemed incredibly important to you. Um, but you know what? It really wasn't. I mean, David says man in his best state is altogether vanity. That's in his best state. What's his worst state, man? I mean, if his best state is altogether vanity, that doesn't speak very well of us in our worst state. Okay? So the fact of the matter is that, you know, look, when you, when you can get past these things, and you can recognize that this is a place where ain't any of us any better than anybody else here. I'm not better than you, you're not better than me. The thing is, it's the blood of Jesus that saves us all. Amen. And in that place, we can have hope one for another, and we can stand together. And the beautiful thing is, is that, look, we get ourselves. I mean, I happen to be an attorney. One of the things that happens to an attorney is I have people walk through my doors that get themselves into situations I could not have even ever dreamed that actually could occur. Um, it's amazing. I don't know if this is true of every attorney, but certainly for me, 
I mean, people walk through that door, and sometimes like my wife would say there was this one woman one time, door open, and it was like you could hear the wind howling outside.